Hey guys, so I've been making some pretty good progress with the Delta Robot and I've been doing a lot of cable management so I've wired a lot of the controller up and cleaned up the encoder ribbon cables and this is from the object tracking camera and I think it looks pretty nice. Just use some of these cable glands that uh, have like a diaphragm that tighten down as well as using some of this um, braided cable sleeve. I'm gonna clean it all up. And I uh, took, also took the arms off because when I start doing some testing with new segments of code, I don't want the machine kind of ripping itself apart. And this way it's pretty um, safe for the machine at least, because there's nothing it can really do if it hits this hard stop or this hard stop up here, it just kind of skips out steps. So nothing could really go wrong there. So um, I'm gonna show you guys the motor controller phone app that I put together using the Blink application, which is a uh, software, it's, it's an app that it's Android and iOS. It's an app that I've used before on this channel. And if you look back at a older video, I showed you how to control these large separate motors with that app. And it's kind of like a blank slate app. And you can drag and drop and um, resize and recolor all different types of buttons and sliders. And it's pretty good for interfacing with ESP32s and other Wi-Fi based microcontrollers. Hey guys, so this is the app right now and I just want to go through a few things before I show you how I got it all set up. But I have a motor control screen and you can see it has pick, plunge, place, retract, uh, encoder. These are all buttons that I've configured and it has like a little um, serial terminal there and these sliders that I can, I can move around the machines off. But uh, I'll turn it on here in a second. I have a jog screen that allows me to jog or home individual motors. I have motor settings that have um, information like the max speed, constant speed, acceleration, pulse width, plunge distance, retract distance, and the origin. I have a teach mode that will basically allow me to move the motors around, record it while it's disengaged so you can freely move it and then replay it. And then sort mode, and that'll be for sorting the uh, golf balls. And I'll have different algorithms like a bubble sort and different things like that. But let me go ahead and uh, turn the machine on. And you see up here, that means the, um, let's see if it focus. Over here, that basically is letting you know that the ESP32 hasn't been connected. So let's go ahead and turn it on. So I have it turned on. And you see it went away. I don't have the motors engaged, but you can still hear the vacuum pump. And then I have the ESP32 send back a vacuum pump on command to the serial terminal. And place is just the solenoid that releases the air pressure. You can see the uh, serial monitor there every time I press the button. So I'm going to go ahead and flip the switch here to turn the motors on. Okay, so now the motors are engaged and I made a homing. So what it's going to do is when I hit this homing sequence right here, it's going to home all and I have it overshooting, and then it'll step um, in small increments. So now all three motors are homed, and there's no need to have a limit switch or anything like that. It doesn't matter if I turn the power of the machine off and turn it back on it knows where it is because of all the encoders. So I don't even have to do that homing sequence. It's just, um, that's where I want the, the motors and um, we'll go from there. But 
So if we go to like the motor control screen and I want to move it, I can I can move them to set positions or I can let's see here focus. I could change the steps. So let's say I want to jog and the way I have it set up is to set the increment you want to jog and so this is my motor one, motor two, motor three, and then backwards, backwards, back. And uh, yeah, so basically this app, uh, like I said, I've spoken about it before in a previous video. Um, if I want to stop it, let me just cut the motors off. If I wanted to alter this, I could stop the program and I could add things. So there's there's a lot of different things to add, um, but it starts out as a blank slate. And the app is free, but if you don't spend any actual money, you would only be able to make basically this this front screen here, where that's my main screen. And the way they kind of make their money is after you end up using the app, you're going to want to add more screens and more buttons. So what they have is like a, um, if you look like this button, it's 200 energy points and they give you thousands of energy points to, to start with. But once you start adding a bunch of things, it, it kind of adds up. So you can, you know, it's not expensive. I mean, $20 gives you 28,000 energy points. And, uh, I mean, that's, I don't think that's, uh, too bad of a price. I mean, $5. Um, I think this first screen, like having that much, um, that many buttons and sliders is enough for most people. I just really like having all the different, um, screens. <sighs> And it's really easy to interface it with ESP32 or any other microcontroller you might have that has Wi-Fi connection. And let's say if you wanted to uh, just go ahead and stop it, let's say this is my button. You could change the colors of a lot of things and, you know, change the, the numbering of them. And if you go online and download the libraries, you'll have a lot of the examples that are pretty easy to follow. But I really like in the app itself, if you click on the information button, it has the example code how to uh, implement it. Alright, well I hope you guys liked that video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll see you next time. See ya!